Oh, there's a spider on my desk. Hello and welcome to my review of the Chaos Space Marine Venom Crawler. The only way to currently get this model um, is through the Shadow Sphere box set, which will cost you £105. I'm hoping they release this model separately. Although it's a monopose model, so you don't really get many options to pose it. And um, maybe Games Workshop will release uh, another one of these, a different version with different guns, like they did with a few of the Death Guard models, um, to give you a bit more customization. Um, but who knows? Uh, I think it's an absolutely awesome model, one of the best models in the set, along with the standard Chaos Space Marines and Master of Possession. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the model. I'll talk about how easy it was to build um, and then I'll show you some size comparisons. And finally, we'll go through all of the rules uh, for this little black widow of a spider. So it was very straightforward and simple to build. I built him in an evening, you know, in, a, in like an hour or two. There are mould lines obviously on the legs and the back legs, there's about four parts of them, maybe five if you count the, the little base thing here. Um, such a lovely model though, reminds me of one of those corpses off of Gears of War with the uh, you know many kind of eyes on there and the, the tongue and the teeth. I like these bladed um, front legs, it has six legs so is it really a spider? Well I suppose it is, it's not... not not really an insect because of, of the the way the abdomen and the thorax is uh, constructed but anyway um i don't want to go into biology but still it's got these little puny kind of defense weapons which aren't puny at all they're quite horrific and we'll go through them in a moment um i like the uh these spikes on the top i'm not really sure what on earth this thing is i <laughs> Can someone just tell me what that is? It looks like it's like a vent that's been left open. Would have been better if it was just smooth, but hey, you know, um, it does look a bit odd that you don't put anything in it. Um, you've got the exhausts on the back. Uh, it looks like there's two, two big exhausts and two smaller ones. Um, you've got a bit of a scenic base here that overlaps the base. You know, whichever way you, you build the model, you're going to have either that piece overlapping or, or that piece. Um, still fine though, it adds to it. You've got a small bit of base there as well. These are a bit spindly, um, especially if, again, they're going to overlap the base just slightly. So that's, yeah, you've got to be really careful with this model. Um, whichever way you build it, either these, um, sp these tendrils are going to overspill or this this part of the base is, um, or even this claw is. So you've got to be really careful about how to package it because um, the parts overlap. If you've had any Tyranid models um, before, you know you're in dodgy territory when um, thin spiky parts overlap the model. Um, but of course, Games Workshop don't think about you putting these in um, boxes and playing with them. Of course not. They're just interested in making awesome models. And that's what this model is. It is an awesome model. I love it. Um, I love this pointed star here with the t um, teeth and the mouth and the tongue. Um, and also this um, big chaos uh, symbol here with another mouth in there. Um, fantastic model. Lots of uh, detail on there. Let's uh, go ahead and show you some size comparisons. So compared to a normal Chaos Space Marine, can you see him? He's in the picture somewhere. Yes, that's him right there. He's tiny compared to this um, Black Widow of a Spider um, demon engine. Um, yeah, I mean, look, he's just, you know, just checking that his bolt gun's okay right there. Yep, he's that's fine. It's, it's well possessed. Um, compared to the Master of Possession, Master of Possession's still tall tall model look at the size of him um but he dwarfs the uh, master of possession no matter how high he leaps to slam dunk that flaming skull into a hoop he's not going to be as tall as a venom crawler um and then you've got a greater possessed nope still is not up for the match of being the size can we get an obliterator in the room yes we can and even an obliterator just doesn't compare to this demon engine absolutely awesome and um, biggest model in a set one of my favourites by far. Let's show you some size comparisons with some squishy Imperial models. So here's a standard um, snack for the Venom Crawler. Uh, standard Space Marine hero. It's not going to be a hero for very long because this spider is just going to eat him up um, very quickly. Um, then next to an Intercessor. A uh, bit more of a mouthful um, but still he... Uh, 
completely dwarfs um, the intercessor. The intercessor barely comes up to his neck really, um, has no chance whatsoever against this beast. So this is my part of the review where I will go through all of the rules uh, for the Venom Crawler. You'll find its rules in your brand new 8th edition Demon Kin mini codex that you find in the uh, Shadow Spear box set. I think his rules actually are in the Chaos Space Marine codex as well. So, um, but I'll double check that when I get the, the codex. He's a heavy support choice and he's a whopping power points cost of a 7 and a points cost of 130 making him the most expensive unit in this set uh, if you don't count buying both of the obliterators um, as one. It's got one of these annoying stat lines where its remaining wounds affects its movement speed, strength and attacks. Now this is where the Mifitic Blight Hauler still beats many units in that it's a demon engine, it has an invulnerable save, it has a good save, it's very flexible, good in combat, good at range, um, very fast as well. Uh, and buffs your force, uh, buffs themselves with the trilobe attack, but it never gets affected by the amount of damage it, uh, it takes on board, whereas this Venom Crawler does. So its stat line when it has between six and 10 wounds is that its movement speed is 10 inches, its weapon skill is four plus, ballistic skill four plus, strength is six, toughness seven, 10 wounds, four attacks, leadership eight, and a save of three plus. When it's got between three and five wounds, it drops its movement speed to eight inches, drops its strength to five, drops its attack to three. And finally, when it's on its last two wounds, its movement speed drops down to six inches, strength four, attacks two. It's still two inches, even when it's got one wound, it's still two inches faster um, than those big hulking obliterators. The poor um, stat line about it is that its weapon skill and ballistic skill are four plus, um, not the best compared to like the Greater Possessed, which weapon skill 2 plus and ballistic skill of 3 plus. Well, there we go. A Venom Crawler is a single model equipped with the Soul Flayer tendrils, eviscerating claws, and two excruciator cannons. All of those weapons cost zero points, if you were wondering. That's why I didn't include them in its uh, base points cost of 130. So these excruciator cannons, um, which are one there and one there, it's equipped with two of them. The range is 36 inches, so heavy bolter range. Assault D3, that means they can always fire them. So you could get two shots with them, or you could get a maximum of six. The strength is plus two. So it's a range weapon that's a f that strength is affected by the number of wounds, which is really odd. But still, that means that it's gonna be strength eight. AP minus two and damage D3. Very, very strong if you can get a decent number of uh, shots. Statistically, you're going to get four shots anyway. Eviscerating Claws then. It's a melee weapon, strength plus two. Again, it'll be strength eight. AP minus three this time and damage three. That's very, very solid. It does have four attacks, drop into three and then drop into two. So again, statistically, you're going to have more attacks, um, so to speak, as shots from the Excruciator Cannon. So it's better to jump in combat um, with this thing. Um, it'll do more damage. Um, but you've still got that option of being 36 inches away. And finally, you've got the Soul Flayer Tendrils. It's a melee weapon again, strength user, which again could be six, five or four, AP minus two and damage two. Each time the bearer fights, it can make two additional attacks with this weapon. That's awesome. You get an extra two attacks on top of the four um, and they're quite good attacks being strength six, AP minus two and damage two as well. So this thing really does wreck in combat too. So I've said it's got a three plus save. It is demonic, so it has a five plus and vulnerable save too. Uh, it has the Devourer of Souls. At the beginning of each of your turns, this model regains one lost wound. In addition, at the end of each fight phase in which this model destroyed an, any enemy models, this model regains one lost wound. That can be pretty horrific. So even more of an incentive to get this unit into combat. I can't say it enough. Um, at the beginning of your turn, it, he'll it will regain a lost wound, and then in a fight phase where it's destroyed any enemy models, you regain another lost wound. So hey, if you get him in combat, that's two wounds every turn that he's healing himself upon. That's unheard of. You don't need to roll any dice for that, it just does it. Reservoir of Demonic Energy. Add one to the result of any demonic ritual summoning rolls made for Legion Master masters of possession whilst they are within six inches of any friendly legion venom crawlers pretty good get your master of possession close to this uh, thing too 
Soul Shredding Explosion. If this model is reduced to zero wounds, roll a d6 before removing the model from the battlefield. On a 5+, plus, it explodes, and each unit within 6 inches suffers d3 mortal wounds. Even more of a reason to get it into close combat, I can't say it enough. Um, this thing is meant to be scuttling along the battlefield, um, firing those assault, those assault weapons, the excruciator cannons, and getting into combat as quickly as it can, and exploding um you know wrecking wrecking face and exploding basically um so that's the icing on the cake uh that you can get uh, d3 mortal wounds on top of it so faction keywords chaos mark of chaos heretic astartes legion vehicle demon demon engine and venom crawler so as you've just heard, very strong rules for this um, creature, not too expensive at 130, has a nice damage output. Unfortunately, its weapon skill and ballistic skill does let it down with the four pluses, and it's one of those awkward vehicles where it loses um, five wounds and it starts to slow it down and its effectiveness starts to uh, be affected, both its ranged weaponry and its melee weaponry but it does have a very strong toughness of seven, a good save of three plus, uh, an invulnerable save of five plus, and it does have those 10 wounds. I'm a big fan of this model. I can't wait to see more demon uh, engines. Obviously we've seen the Lord Discordant and I really can't wait for that um, model uh, in the next couple of weeks. But I'm interested. What do you guys think of this arachnid looking demon engine? Um, and can, can't you wait to see more of this uh, chaos stuff? Um, be great to hear from you. Please do put it in the comments below as always. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. Death to the False Emperor.